Namaste. Maybe I should say, I have won. <laughs> Live long and prosper. So the last time we talked about the introduction to the Devi Kalotra, and I uncovered an error in the Ramanashramam version in the title. So they are titling it Devi Kalotra, but it's actually Devi Kalotra. One little letter, huh? From a to a makes a complete difference in the meaning. So Devi Kalotra means that knowledge which is unutterable, which cannot be spoken. But obviously here Shiva is going to speak about it. <laughs> so it can't be too unspeakable. No, actually it's Kalotra. Kala, not Kala. Kalotra. Which means Kala, time as the destroyer. Shiva is the destroyer of the worlds. And his weapon is time. So simply by time, he destroys everything. And Utra means the end. So it's, you can interpret it several ways. The end of time, or the ultimate knowledge, or the knowledge that you use when you're fed up and completely out of time and patience. <laughs> so for those who want to attain liberation, now and not wait anymore this is the ultimate knowledge so last time we went over Ishwari's question her wonderful question and today we're going to start with Ishwara's answer O Queen among women so that everyone may attain knowledge jnana I shall clearly explain to you today the highest knowledge and the discipline to be followed by which discerning seekers will attain liberation, which is free from any blemish and is difficult to describe. So there's also a question of this final clause, which is free from any blemish and is difficult to describe. Is that talking about liberation? Or is that talking about the knowledge and the discipline that leads to it? Well, both. Both the liberation, moksha, and the knowledge and discipline, the path, that lead to it are free from any blemish, absolutely perfect, and whole. And they're very difficult to describe. But I'm going to attempt to sum up this knowledge in this video from my own experience. And then we can, later on, we're going to go through all of the shlokas in sequence. So what is that secret which describes the real nature of the self, the universe, and gives the key to liberation, moksha. Uh, first of all, liberation from what? Well, liberation from karma, from birth and death, from repeated suffering in the material world. So to be free from karma, one has to become at cause over karma. And who is at cause over karma? Shiva and Devi. So one has to attain that position. So from the reality is, <laughs> we're already in that position. Let me tell this in the form of a story. Maybe it'll be clearer. Shiva is one side of Brahman and Devi is the other side. Brahman is one and is complete in itself. Brahman 
is static. There's no change, no boundary, no motion, no activity, no qualities, nothing. But as it's stated in the Upanishads, Brahman said, I am one. Let me become many. So the first uh, division or differentiation in Brahman is into Shiva and Shakti. And later on it will be explained in Devi Kalotra <laughs> that Shiva is the principle of I and Devi is the principle of am. I am. See, prior to this division, there is no need for Brahman to say, I am. Because Brahman always is. Huh? So there's no need for Brahman to declare its existence. Brahman alone is, say the Upanishads. So, if there's a difference between you and me, between Shiva and Shakti, then it becomes necessary to declare, I am. You see, I is understood in distinction with you, and am is understood in distinction with am not. So this is the beginning of duality, the division into subject and object into perceiver and perceived, into uh, the consciousness and the perceptions that fill that consciousness, the, the awareness and the content. So obviously this is at a very high level. So then what happens? Shiva says to Devi, I want to become many and I want to create the universe and populate it with my many selves. Now, Devi is in love with Shiva. She loves him more than anything. Well, he, he is everything to her. So she's willing to do this, huh? to serve him, to make him happy. But she doesn't have to like it. <laughs> so, okay, she's going to help Shiva become divided into many and take birth in the worlds and go through all kinds of experiences. But she also wants to make sure that he comes back. So Devi, who is Satchit Ananda, huh? eternal existence, full consciousness and bliss, she creates the world, which is asat, nishchit, and nirananda. <laughs> it's temporary, it's full of suffering, and it's not self. These are the three qualities the Buddha mentioned, the qualities of the world. It's temporary, it's unsatisfactory, and it's not self. So that way, these separated selves of Shivam will again be forced to come back to their original position to avoid the suffering, which is a part and parcel of material existence. She's a clever lady. <laughs> oh, queen among women, he addresses her. So of all women, she is the best. Uh -huh. She knows how to serve her partner, to meet his desires and also hers. <laughs> so Devi creates this world and then Shiva takes birth in it in many, many forms. And here's the way it works from the perspective of the individual. Uh -huh. The individual desires, let me take birth. Oh, let me take birth as Brahma and create the universe. 
<laughs> well, actually, the universe is created by, by uh, Devi. She is the universe. She is the substance of the creation. But she lets Brahma think that, that he's doing it. <laughs> and this is true for all of us. Everything that happens in our lives and around us just happens by the force of nature. And we're just along for the ride. We're experiencing our destiny, our karma, in different forms. But we're not the doers. And how we meet that destiny, how we experience our fate, whether we accept it or struggle against it, determines our karma in the next life. So Ramana Maharshi taught Everything that happens in this life is predestined, preordained by karma. It's fate. It's going to happen, whether we struggle against it or accept it with grace. But the way in which we accept it, the mental efforts that we make, will determine the karma in future lives. So in this way, we should be very careful not to struggle against our fate, but accept it. So then we enter the samsara, and we take many, many births in many different forms. Uh, it's like a rubber ball bouncing down the stairs. You don't know exactly where it's going to land, but it's always going to be lower <laughs> until it reaches rock bottom. And at that point, the individual says, wait a minute, this suffering is too much. I'm, I'm tired of this. I'm going to get out of here. And he starts the long, slow process of self-realization. How slow? How long? Well, Shankaracharya said, to gain the uh, quality, the adhikar, necessary for complete self-realization, one has to go through 100 crores of pious births. A crore is 10 million. So a hundred crore is a billion. A billion births of making efforts for self-realization. And then one reaches the point where one can understand and implement this Devi Kalotara. Because this is the direct path after all the obstacles have been removed. And the way they're removed is by purification through sadhana. So, how does it work? Well, as long as we are a separate individual, we are a child of Devi, and we look at her as mother, Ma, or Ama, huh? and we're completely dependent on her like any child. And she takes care of us, and sometimes chastises us. <laughs> it's for our own good gradually bringing us back to our original position, the position of Shivam, the state of Shivam. And what is that? No ego, no desire. Everything done, finished, no karmic balance, no need to be or do or have anything. That's Shiva. That's the state that Shiva is in. Uh, so we have within us, within what we call our individual self, this state of Shiva. And we also have this Shakti. Uh, there's two people living in the body, Shiva and Shakti. Shiva is what we call our self. Shakti is also the self, but she's the manifested self. So she's the one who creates the body. She's the one who digests the food, who beats the heart, who uh, breathes while we're asleep. Uh, she is memory and forgetfulness. She is desire and fulfillment, or not. <laughs> she is the agency of karma. She is the natural laws that determine everything in life. 
So she is taking her dear partner, Shiva, on this journey that he wants to go, who inexplicably <laughs> wants to go on. <laughs> and she is giving all facility. So then how do we get out of this? How do we end this journey when we're tired of the suffering? We attain the state of Shivam. How do we do that? Through meditation. You see, the one thing that will attract Devi and bring her under control is this state of Shivam. When we're in this state, then she is our complete servant, or almost like maid servant. She'll do whatever we want. Up to that point, though, we're her, her baby, her child, and she's in control. So, the point of the practice and the discipline of Devi Kalotra is to attain this state of Shivam. And once we do, then she comes under control. She becomes our consort. And as Ishwara and Ishwari, we can again merge back into Brahman and attain completion. How important is this? Well, Sri Chandra Shekharendra Saraswati, uh, Kanchi Mahapariva, said, the whole drama of human existence, all the suffering, the conflicts, the wars, the competition, all the crazy things that happen that people do, uh, everything that goes on on this planet is worthwhile if even one person attains this completion. In the beginning, I thought, wow, oh, this, this is a kind of an extreme uh, attitude. But no, it's true. <laughs> because if one person attains the state of Shivam, then Devi is kept under control. Huh? But to do that, you have to destroy the universe. Which means you have to transcend all these desires for petty material things. And enter this highest state of Turiyatita. Huh? We talked about the three stages of consciousness, Jagrat, Sushupta, and uh, no, Jagrat, Svapna is dreams, and Sushupta, which is deep sleep. And that one who has access and has mastered all three of them is in a state called Turiya. Turiya means the fourth. But then there's a state beyond that, Turiyatita, where one is completely detached from all perceptions. And this is the state of Shivam. So one has to become a master of consciousness up to the point of Turiyatita, and then the goal is attained. Aum. Aum Harihi Aum